it sometimes gets a little weird, you know, when the people are zeroing in on your house. You'd think by now that Gene Oxiger would be used to all the attention. A lot of people are kind of dumbstruck when they come. I'll answer the door and they're unable to express what they're here for. They're sitting there, uh, uh, uh. Maybe what they're trying to say is, Please step to the rear of the spear. How's that? Please step to the rear of the spear. Please step to the rear of the sphere. Those eight immortal words were first uttered in 1962 to guide passengers aboard the Bubbleator, one of the signature attractions at the Seattle World's Fair. You better ski daddle to Seattle for the fair. Just ask Louis Larson. He was there on the ground floor. Yeah, it looked like a mess. The mess was the massive construction that transformed the sleepy part of Lower Queen Anne into the world of Century 21. Louis Larson is the last surviving senior staff member of the spectacle that changed Seattle and Louis Larson forever. Every day was exciting. I mean, uh, every day was like New Year's Eve. It was an experience that very, very few people would ever have in a lifetime. Met a lot of great people, had, a, had an enjoyable time. It wasn't a day I didn't want to go to work. 10 million people visited the futuristic fair from April to October 1962. The theme was Century 21. Imagine, if you can, an electronic brain operating at millionth of a second speed. And while the monorail and Space Needle remain visible as tangible reminders of what the future looked like 60 years ago, the Bubbleator has moved on. Bubbleator was very popular. It was unique. It, you know, I, I think that was the whole thing. But that was in the Washington State Pavilion, which is with the uh, Climate uh, Pledge Arena coming up. What exactly was the bubbleator? Just a common everyday elevator? It is a bubble-shaped elevator that was in the uh, Washington State Coliseum, which we now know as Climate Pledge Arena. And it was a, a bubble-shaped elevator that people would go into, and they would go to the second floor to experience a futuristic exhibit. Clara Berg is curator of collections at Mohai, Seattle's Museum of History and Industry, home since 2005 to the bubbleator operator's chair. So we were able to purchase it uh, with some help from the community and have it come to Mohai. And it had a few modifications. There was some orange shag carpet on it and there are things that have been added. So uh, we tried to kind of take it back to as close as we, what we think uh, it was from the time. After the fair, the bubbleator was moved across the fairgrounds to what's now called the Armory, where it was used for nearly 20 years as, well, a common everyday elevator. In 1980, as part of a renovation project, the bubbleator went away which brings us back to where we started. Please step to the rear of the sphere. Please step to the rear of the sphere. Exactly. I believe that's what they call a meme. In 1983, Gene was working for the old Seattle PI newspaper. Legendary local journalist and future Seattle City Council member Gene Godden sent him on a reconnaissance mission to meet a man at a warehouse on the north side of Lake Union. The bubbleator was in a heap, literally. I mean, it was just plexiglass and, and uh, aluminum strewn all over the floor. Yeah, it looked like a mess. And he turned to me and he said, do you want it? You know, if you, if you want it, make me an offer. I made him an offer and he said, he says, no, nah, I can't let it go for that. <laughs> Two days later, I get a phone call back from him and he said, double your offer and get it out of here. So I ended up with a bubble later and it cost me $1,000. I was in the process of planning a house. You know, it was such a unique shape and it was a historical artifact. I thought it would make a great uh, greenhouse. Yes, that's a wonderful idea. Welcome to the bubble later. It's been cleaned out now, but this was a greenhouse and uh, hopefully soon it will be hosting a lot of plants again. Why do people still seek out the bubble later decades after it left town? It wasn't a common uh, everyday elevator. People fell in love with it. And it also, I think, was of the size that people could wrap their arms around the idea of, you know, this is something that's not too large. We look at the Space Needle and everything, you're not gonna be able to embrace the Space Needle the way you can something smaller like this. As for the future of the bubbleator, Gene Oxiger says that not too long ago, Seattle Center officials asked him to consider donating it back. The main idea would be is to, you know, simply be able to preserve it, but also taking care of the fact that it is gonna leave a large hole in the house. But if that large hole at Gene's house could be fixed, it does open up at least one intriguing possibility at Seattle Center. 
Do you think they should bring the bubble later back to the climate? No, arena? I hope not. <laughs> I, I think what they're doing is fantastic. There's only room for 100. Or should I just do it without the only just room? Just do the rear, rear of the okay. sphere. Step to the rear of the sphere. Yes, please, though. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> please step to the rear of the sphere. On a rail of Dela Kiss from you, there'll be a fancy fair at the Seattle World's Fair this summer of 62. Bring a lot of money. This summer of 62. Watch City Stream Tuesday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel or find us anytime online at seattlechannel.org.